a new 1% tax to save the economy. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my morning Steiner coffee and I think you're all going to need it too for this one. Because we've been worried about the economy. I've been discussing how all of these lockdowns are going to have a significant economic effect for weeks now, for months now. But, but stupid, stupid Florian, I didn't realize. I didn't realize. There's a solution, everyone. There is a solution. And it's just taxing us more. Just taxing us more. You could, did you, did you know? Did you know, guys? Did you know? You could tax your way into prosperity. This is fantastic idea coming from the left side of politics. Brilliant. You can tax your way out of, out of, oh, into prosperity. Tax your way out of recession. It's bound to work. Guaranteed. Wow. The same old stuff recycled again and again and again. Lucky we have such brilliant leaders. Oh, and wait till you hear who the idea came from. Wait till you hear who the idea came from, everyone. A radical 1% tax to save the economy. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm reading it wrong. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Maybe it's a reducing of all taxes just down to 1%. What do you think? Let, let me know in the comments while I have a shot of my coffee. So let's have a look. Let's have a look. Former Labour Senator Sam Destiari... Oh, we've heard. Why have we heard that name before? Why have we heard that name before? I wonder. I wonder. Let's have a look here. Boom. Is a is an Australian former politician who, from twenty thirteen to twenty eighteen, represented New South Wales in the Australian Senate as a Labor, member of the Labor Party. Mm, let's, let's click on him here because I, I swear I've heard heard something about him before. Oh, Chinese influence scandal. Oh, there we go. I'll let you go through that on your own, guys. I'll let you go on through that. Go, you know, on that through your own. There you go. So, oh, lucky, lucky he's coming up with these, these brilliant ideas. I mean, has he, ever, has he ever had a real job? He's just been in the unions. <clears throat> in the unions. Early career, political career. Want to, what, what was he doing before then? That's what I want to know. I don't give a crap about all this time in the union. What did he do to to learn his stuff? He's only a couple of years younger than me. Come on, mate. Oh, well, let, let's let's hear this one. Let's hear this one, guys. A one percent tax. This, this is like uh, the other thing is like when people propose a two percent flat transaction tax. It sounds good, but it can add up really cr quick and really hamper the economy. Let's have a look at this. Former Labor uh, Senator Sam has proposed a 1% tax on all Australians to cover the economic fallout of Victoria's unprecedented lockdown restrictions. Speaking on today on Tuesday, Das Diari said that if Australia truly was all in this together, the country would be finding a way to stem the financial hemorrhaging from the Victorian lockdown the Victorian lockdown has triggered. Well, we're all going to suffer for it one way or another. But it's the responsibility of the Victorian leadership. And the Victorian people have voted in that leadership. And that leadership has made brilliant decisions that have resulted in this, this fantastic, real-world, lived experience everyone's going to get of a authoritarian dictatorship. Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews has announced Victorians will need to abide by new curfew rules, while also following tougher restrictions on how often they can leave their home. So under house arrest, essentially. Or close to it. Well, no, actually not... Not, not that yet. We don't have the, the tracking ankle bracelets yet getting put on people, like happened in America. Retail stores deemed inessential will be forced to close for the next six weeks, threatening economic disaster. The solution, Victoria, is simple. You're going to have to bail the state out, and that means the rest of us are going to have to pay, he said. It looks like you put a 1% tax on the whole country, and that money gets spent in Victoria to protect these jobs. He said Australia needs to be united, warning that it could be Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide or Perth who needs bailing out next. Or here's another idea. We just break apart the Federation. What about that? What about that? We each go all go our separate ways. You know, each state just becomes an independent nation. You know, Federation, we, we've, it's, it's done well. We've done it for a good hundred years. But how about we just, you know, pull it apart? Pull it apart. 
you know, maybe each colony contributes to a, a federal defense fund. That's it. That's it. Then everything else gets to a closer level, a closer level. I'm being facetious here, but the argument is that you want the government to be done at the, by the elements that are closest to the people. It could be a hurricane, could be a flood. You bail out your brothers and sisters when they're in trouble. His comments come after a group of high net worth individuals called on the government to permanently increase taxes on the wealthiest to cover the cost of the pandemic. I mean, come on. You know what they're going to do. I, I bet you they'll... Um, they See, here's the thing. High net worth individuals, you don't need the government to force you to pay extra taxes. You can do it yourself. You can voluntarily provide extra money. The problem is here, they'll just find loopholes around the taxes and not do it. The higher people's net worth, the more money they have, the more ability they have to avoid the taxes. How many of the footy stars do we hear about that have all got offshore, offshore mansions or live in Puerto Rico and all these other things? This is the thing, because, you know, you put it up on there, oh, we need to put it up on everyone. Everyone has to pay their fair share. So it's the middle class that cops it. And even the impoverished will cop it. If they put up GST, you can tax your way out, out, out of. I mean, but that is, is all his experiences in unions. I mean, bloody hell. I guess it's a, it's a different world. It must be a different way of thinking. The 83 super rich include Disney Air, Abigail Disney, Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream co-founder, Jerry Greenfield. Oh, well, he's a social justice warrior. Disney, I mean, just look at the stuff that's coming out of it now. I had to cancel Disney+. Plus. It's so just uh, subversively woke now. It's it's a bit... The old, the old hero motive is completely flipped on itself. You know, the bad guy isn't always good. Sometimes you want to teach your children that the bad guy is bad. Because that's how life is. You need to be wary of them. As the pandemic strikes the world, millionaires like us have a crucial role to play in healing the world, the millionaires said. Well, do it. Don't just call for more taxation. Don't just call for more intervention in people's lives. Completely do it voluntarily. Come on. No, we are not the ones caring for the sick in intensive care wards. We are not the driving the ambulances that will be bringing the to hospital. We are not restocking grocery shelves to deliver food door to door. But we do have money, lots of it. Money that is desperately needed now and will continue to be needed for the years ahead. Well, what are you doing? Australians on Twitter agreed, calling for greater taxes on the rich and multinational corporations. Here's the problem. It sounds good. It sounds good. But then you'll just drive away the wealthy. There'll be a few token idiots that, that are here that are going, yes, 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 they're, they're probably so wealthy, they don't care. I mean, she's an heir. She hadn't didn't have to work for it, so she's got no idea. You know, Ben and Jerry's ice cream co-founder, okay. I mean, he's only a co-founder. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. But they'll move away. You'll disincentivize people building a wealth or you'll, you'll incentivize them to get out of the country. Look at what happens in all these countries when they tax the rich. You can't tax your way to prosperity. That's not how life works. Why not tax one, the people and companies that earn a lot yet pay little? Reinhardt and her lot. Ch she pays a lot of tax. What bullshit is that? Churches and religious organizations that are normally exempt from paying tax, one person commented. So it's a tax on churches. Because churches and religious organizations don't provide um, social services to a whole lot of people. Come on. Why don't we tax, I don't know, why don't we put a 1% tax on the BLM protesters that actually spread the illness? Well, why don't we do that, you know? Why don't we tax every every media personality, every politician that was calling for that? Now we have, you can get fined if you leave your house and go five kilometers away without the, the, the um, star, star, uh, police's permission. Why aren't we taxing the people that encourage the social disobedience for a political, an ideological movement that align with them? You can get your car windows smashed in if you want to go for a drive. But protesting is fine. I need another shot of coffee. I'm surprised he's still getting airtime. Isn't, isn't he a Chinese plant? Anyway. Oh, look here. Why is someone like this, who probably hasn't... I mean, my... um. My encounter with a, with a BLM protester. 
he was completely unorganized. The young guy had failed at what university four times. Didn't have a shit together. His net worth was like four hundred bucks. He was fighting with his parents. You know, just yeah, was a child, a child in a man's body, a child in a man's body. That was the problem. Okay. So no, no. Why is this not mentioned? Why is it not mentioned? Never, never anymore. It's just disappeared from our radar. Nice idea, Sam, but I'd prefer all profit-making entities and corps to actually pay tax. The rich have expanded their wealth since the pandemic hit. The rest of us are a few weeks away from not affording rent, another added. See, that's the problem. That's the problem here. It's people that are living hand-to-mouth. Hand-to-mouth. They're probably, frankly, some of the people these days are living with less reserves than, than I'd say some of the serfs did in the Middle Ages. At least then you would store food up for the winter. At least then there was an incentive to keep you on the field working. I guess that's just our uh, our mortgages, isn't it? Our fields, our taxes. That's that's what we pay. You know. But uh, you know, I honestly, they make a point. They make a point. I love the character that he's got there. What's that show? I've got to watch that again. They make a point about some multinational companies avoiding tax. So what you do is you want to create incentives to keep the taxes in this country. You want to create incentives for foreign companies to set up their head office here so everything starts flooding into here. And one way to do that is to reduce your sovereign risk, is to reduce the taxation that you charge on businesses, to reduce your red tape. It's a competitive market and businesses... They have the capacity to offshore. They'll send have an office in Ireland. That'll give them a competitive advantage. You'd be stupid not to do that. That's what shareholders expect. If you want a share of that profit, very simply, you invest in that company. But if you're living hand to mouth and can't even plan to have a budget aside, I can see why that seems completely unattainable to people. So what do you think, guys? What do you think? Do you think we need a 1% tax on everyone in the country? Do you think this is going to save us? Do we need to le listen to a, a former senator who's got years of experience in different unions? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. I think the idea of taxing ourselves to prosperity is ludicrous. I think Victoria is going to cop it. I think every, every state... We're entering a recession, everyone. It's going to happen. There needs to be some creative destruction. We need to burn the old growth away so the new growth can come up and that's going to be tough for some people there's going to be some pain there's going to be some boomers that lose their houses okay that's what's going to happen there's going to be some some gen x's and millennials who just went really far into debt for a shitty house that are going to be in negative equity for a long time you know that's the sad part of life guys let me know your thoughts and opinions on it would you pay an extra one percent tax if you're a fan of the channel and want to support us, there are a few ways you can. Simply interacting with the channel, commenting, liking, sharing. You can support us financially by joining the channel on YouTube or Patreon, using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.